Welcome to Good Game Ham Radio's radio and outdoors live stream. Um, I'm Steve, K5ATA, and tonight, well, we're starting out talking about something a little bit different, but tonight we are going to talk about digital modes. So first, though, let's take care of some of the uh, preliminary stuff we have to take care of. Um, that subscribe button down below, do me a favor, click that, click that bell so that it gets, sends you notifications whenever we have new content. Um, there is an Amazon affiliate link down below as well. Um, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does earn the channel a little bit of money, helps support the school radio club. And, of course, there's the Patreon link below as well. Um, all the money from that Patreon link goes directly to support the radio club I have at school, which is middle school and high school kids that we've gotten into ham radio. So um, with, that all, uh, with all that out of the way, I'm going to kind of take a little bit of a left turn from what we were going to talk about today. Um, we'll get back. We will get to the digital modes. But first, uh, let's see who's in the chat first. Let's see who we got. Let's see. K6ARK, Mike, K and MRD is in the house. Ape, who claims to have been here first, but he always feels like he's first. We just let him feel that way. He's, he drinks that beer that gets participation medals, so we let it go. Um, Chuck's in the house. I think I saw Andy creep in. Andy's here. And all right, so Mike K and MRD is taking a bunch of radio stuff to go, I guess, get some kids on the air or something up wherever he lives in Michigan, I think. And so I guess they're in Michigan. So make sure you kind of keep us posted as to um, where they're going to be on the air. I'd love to get on the air. Jarek and I get on the air and make some contacts with them. That's right. If you ain't first, you last, brother. Second place is first place loser. All right, so. One of the things I kind of want to take a hard left for, and this may take a second, it may take more than a second. Well, look, hey, Greg, good to see you, man. Is, let me slide my big old mug out of the way, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce that, her name correctly or not. Rhea <clears throat> Jerem, um, N2RJ recently tweeted this out and wanted to know, tell me what's wrong with ham radio and how you'd fix it if you're uncomfortable with running yada 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 okay um and then let's, there were uh, i thought i saw something about 50 something responses and whatnot in there um and the responses in there kind of run the gamut when you look at it um there's mine right there i just responded a little while ago basically saying you know folks are constantly going after or folks are constantly saying things like getting kids on the air or ways because they don't have a lot of cash to spend which is true um, in that they don't have a lot of cash to spend. But to say that it's a waste to get a kid licensed, I think, is, is a stretch because, you know, we can do a lot to help get them on the air while they're in school and uh, hopefully light that fire. And it's – ham radio to me is more than just, you know, a kid sitting there playing on a radio. Obviously, that's a good, a good part of it. But building stuff, learning to solder – Stuff like that, you know, take stuff apart and just creating stuff, even if that stuff doesn't always work. Um, that's kind of, to me, part of what what it is. But when you start looking through some of these responses, we're going to kind of touch on a couple of these. Um, Adam Kimberly, hey, I know this guy. Uh, pretentiousness, and he's, he's a big word. He's kind of a big brain kind of fella. The hubris of so many hams resulting in the derision of other hams' niches. In the hobby um, and I would agree a lot of these people that you know kind of have that hey you made it uh, that holier than thou kind of feeling or that feeling like you know if you're talking on a Baofeng then you know it's like um, you're not worthy and you know they're kind of doing that to them and that is completely the wrong attitude that's kind of you know my response was along the lines of um, Kids want to be on the air, but they don't want to get yelled at for being on the air. And some people just tend to be turd nuggets about that kind of stuff. So, you know, in the, in the chat, y'all throw in some of your ideas. Yeah, Adam likes to use that fancy speak, those big brain words. But uh, also I would encourage you, find her tweet. And uh, I mean, she's easy to find, N2RJ. And she's a, a director for ARRL, something for the foundation, financial. She 
she's pretty active on social media, so you can find her. Um, and get in there and, and actually respond to her. Because, well, I think she didn't ask the question in – the way I read it is, you know, what are some things that can be improved in ham radio? And not the tell me what's wrong with it. It's kind of like what's wrong with that kid or something like that. No, it's more like, you know, just what are some things that we can make better is kind of how I read it. And uh, and this is true. Turd Nuggets is not to be confused with Ham Nuggets. Well, I guess it could be confused, but you would realize it pretty darn quickly if you did. Um, but anyway, scrolling down, it took me about four minutes to pack my clothes. Yeah, that's the way it usually works. I kind of just shove stuff in a bag, and then my wife tells me what I forgot. Um, here's Ham Radio 2.0's. Uh, the largest problem reflected in most of your advice here, you shouldn't do this because I don't like it, stuff like that. Okay, which is kind of where I'm going a little bit with, you know, the digital mode stuff. There are a lot of folks out there that don't think digital mode is real ham radio. Um, you know, if if you don't like something, that's that's your call. You don't have to like something. But, you know, the solution to that is just don't use that form of radio. But don't sit there and, you know yell and holler at people that are like, oh, I can't believe you're doing this. This is not real ham radio. You know, when you give a kid a bow thing and somebody's chewing him out on the air because he accidentally says 10-4 or Roger at the end of a transmission, okay, that radio goes straight home, gets put on the shelf, or in the case with me, they bring it back to school and they give it to me and they're like, hey, I'm going to check this back in. And it's like, oof, just lost that one. Thanks, y'all. Um, so, you know, when, when you're on the air, be especially mindful of, of new hams. You know, I, obviously I focus on kids. It's the, the reason, you know, for the Patreon and everything like that. I teach school. Um, that's where I get kids licensed. But, you know, it, the same goes for a new ham too. You can be, you know, 12 or 72 and be a new ham. It doesn't really matter. But make sure that when you're dealing with those people, you know, at least try to remember back to when you were new and you didn't have a clue. You know, don't chew somebody out like, you know, Abe got chewed for calling something a loading coil or whatever. But Alex McTurd Nuggets. Um, let's see. And then we've got KM, whatever that is. Long answer. People outside of tech have no idea ham radio exists. And, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I would agree to some extent. But at the same time... You know, if we don't constantly tell people, and, and somebody else down here comments this as well, you know, the reality is with all of the Aries and Races and all that stuff, and, you know, and I'm the emergency coordinator for my county, but in reality, how likely is it that I'm going to get called up to activate a bunch of hams for, you know, some true emergency? Not very likely. Um, not anymore. I mean... Ham radio has always kind of operated under that presumption of we're we're ready to to help out when needed, but you know in reality that's not the primary focus of ham radio. To me, the primary focus of ham radio needs to be you know having a good time, experimenting, doing something that you like to do. Um, you know if if you're constantly oh to's first, sorry eight to beat you, but talk to the new B is the same as. Well, you know, and, and that's kind of that yes and no. I mean, you don't want to talk down to a new ham, and a lot of a lot of people do, especially like on repeaters where they've had their same – hang on, I already need a sip of the lifeblood. Where they've had the same, you know, morning drive gang forever and a day, and then all of a sudden there's a new voice. And you're right. You really don't know whether it's a new ham or it's just somebody who's passing through or somebody who moved to the area. But – when people talk down to somebody or just talk to to them differently, I mean that's obviously it's, it's ex exclusive without being, you know, blatantly so I guess without saying you're not welcome at my party. But at the same time, you know, I had some kids get on the air and and the gentleman that was kind enough to stay on the repeater so he could be everybody's first contact and I don't. You know, he's he's been around a few minutes. He's like eighty something years old. But he uh the kid one of the kids went outside and this guy started instantly throwing, you know, what's your QTH and this and that and the other and okay, 
he had no clue. He's looking at me, and his eyes got, you know, huge. And he's like, what's he talking about, Willis? And so, you know, we kind of had to explain that stuff to him. And he left that conversation kind of feeling like an idiot for no reason. I mean, you know, you don't expect somebody who's brand new to something to know everything that's in there. Um, we do need a tweet from the, the UV5 Army in that. So, T.O., we're counting on you to head over to a Rhea's tweet now and go ahead and, and tweet from the, the Baofeng UV5 Army. There's a couple references to the Feng Gang in, well, not Feng Gang specifically, but the Baofengs, and somebody even kind of threw a little shade at them, saying stuff like, you know, it's hard to find a cost-efficient or cost-effective radio that doesn't have spurious emissions and this and that and the other, but, you know, um, to me personally, <clears throat> You know, this is this is the gateway drug to, to ham radio. That's why I, I buy so many of these things because you want them on the air. But if they get on the air and then they're treated badly, you know, they get right back off the air. A couple more of these comments and we'll slide out of here and head over to uh, the digital mode stuff. Just This kind of got my goat today. So <clears throat> I saw it this morning and had time to reply to it later, but. I see here's this guy, Harmless Ham, says, <clears throat> don't don't introduce ham radio only as disaster communications method, and especially not to kids. You know, if you're trying to, if you're one of these folks that's trying to get kids into radio, you know, <clears throat> don't throw it down as, oh, yeah, it's the backup system to, you know, this and that and the other. They're going to be like, I got a phone. Um, just like, you know, all the Mars stuff and stuff like that. I'm just, there are still Mars groups out there, but I don't. Need, I'm not even sure what they do. We all need more Baofengs. I definitely need more Baofengs because the new school year is starting and it's coming fast. We'll see. Uh, I'd like to know what difference between a random wire with a counterpoise and an offset. <laughs> so you know, you should get on the repeater and next time somebody starts throwing down shade at one of the new kids, just start asking them that stuff. Shade them back. No, I'm kidding. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I saw I saw Dennis on the tweet roll. Did I pass him already? I meant to stop at him and he is. Yeah, he he ended up as a whole big blog post. So eighty six. Uh, let's just see what old Dennis had to say. I've not read his yet. Oh, that's, uh, that's not too bad. And I, I will resist the urge as an English teacher to edit this as we go. Yeah, we're not going to read that whole thing, but, you know, Dennis is a smart dude, so he, <clears throat> I'm sure that he's got some great points in here. Many times over oversimplifies periodic magazine subscription, so. So, yeah, basically he's saying, it looks like just from glancing at it, and I may be wrong, I mean, I'm just doing the quick read, is saying, you know, organizations aren't efficient and representing the hobby like they should and whatnot. And then there's another one down here <clears throat> that I wanted to go ahead and touch on because I know I am a dad of a daughter and T.O. is a dad of, he's got like five daughters or something. He's got some ridiculous amount of estrogen in his house. In his house. He's probably got all female goats too. It's probably all estrogen, I feel for the dude. But Somebody down here said something about, you know, <clears throat> all the gender inequality stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I've never liked the term XYL um, or YL or all that stuff. You know, I use the, the term OM as kind of a, a diss on an attitude. But I need to find who that person is. But. That person basically, they're saying, how about we get some, rid of some of this, you know, blatant sexism out there? <clears throat> and the reality is, you know, if, if my wife or my daughter gets on the air, and you can see it on any of my POTA videos, okay, they get swamped, you know, and it, it's, I mean, I, it's just the way it is, but when you, when they start talking, they're like, you know, XYL this and XYL that, and you know, I mean, it's just, I don't know, I think it's distasteful, and that's just me, so, but I, and, uh, hello, ladies, welcome, and, let's see, oh, yep, 
mom with a daughter here. So <clears throat> anyway, that's kind of my soapbox there. So if you haven't had a chance to head over to Twitter and hit that, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about Rhea. I do know that she's extremely active, and I know that um, she's open to vociferous discussions. <laughs> she, she, she can, she, she'll argue with you if, if you want her to, is from what I understand. But head over there and let her know what you think, because you know there aren't a whole lot of point, or there aren't a whole lot of people at the ARRL who are listening to this stuff. So <clears throat> when somebody throws out the line, ask and say, hey, what do you want me to take back and talk about? We need to take advantage of that and, you know, let her know. Um, don't don't go in there throwing a bunch of hate and a bunch of shade. Just, you know, give realistic what do you think some of the issues are and how, how we can fix it. So I'm going to scroll back up real quick and see what some of the comments are. Hey, Bill's here. Good to see you, man. <clears throat> yeah, Don, I saw that. Hey, Don. That uh, pie stars are part of the problem. And, yeah, somebody said something about um, it's ridiculous that you're required to have three radios, one to do D-Star, one to do Fusion, and one to do DMR. Well, you don't need to have all three radios. I kind of look at the different flavors of digital voice as kind of like, you know, the different flavors of hunting or fishing. You know, if, if you hunt, that doesn't necessarily mean you bow hunt. You know, you can, you can, you can still enjoy something and not necessarily have or be into every single part of it. Here we is, Ham Radio 2.0 in the house. Um, <clears throat> I've had great feedback from Mary Hams. I'll talk to the kids on the repeater with no problem, and that's great, Bill. Because you know, I'm pretty lucky here. Most of the time, you know, there are a couple folks that are always on on the repeater, and they will. But you know, there are those occasions where, and you know, you. You hear about them all the time where somebody new gets on the air and it's, you know, well, you shouldn't have said Roger at the end. and That's just, it's just stupid. You know, take those, those moments when it's pretty easy to figure out when somebody's new, you know, after they start talking a couple of times and uh, use it as that teaching opportunity. Then I mean, in teaching, that's what it is. Somebody says something, whether it's a hard left from what we're talking about or not, if it's a teachable moment. I'm going to set the hook and run with it because that's something they're interested in right then. You know, when I taught English for years, I did the same thing. I mean, let's just be real. The kids aren't all that interested in commas. But if they've got like a legitimate discussion about some piece of literature or something that they're interested in, I'm going to take the left and, and go with it. So the same thing here. Let's see what else we got in here. Andy, appreciate it, brother. Thank you. That will go into the uh, Baofeng Budget Fund and the 7300 Fund and the list of things that I want and need for school that just gets longer and longer. All right, let's see. Even uh, let's see. Let's see. No, just one specific. Right okay, so I think I'm caught up on most of that. All right, so on to the other stuff. Okay, so I don't use PowerPoint a whole bunch, so. But I kind of had to keep myself on track. Otherwise, I would wander everywhere. Um, now, this is certainly not a be-all, end-all, and you'll figure that out in a hurry <clears throat> to ham radio digital modes. Um, it's more just kind of like talking points, I guess. Um, you know, for those new hams that are curious about it, a little bit of history into some, what some of these things are, and then a couple of the newer modes. But more just like a springboard, some place to, to get an idea and go, oh, I didn't realize that. Um, the uh, the thumbnail for this had in white my, at the bottom that said, is our, our, our ham radio digital mode the perfect Yoda mode, you know, youth on the air. And my thing is, I think it can be if it's, if it's done correctly. So, um, so some of the advantages, you know, and this is stuff that most of us know, but if you don't, you know, throw your question in the chat. Trust me, there are tons of folks in here that, that have these answers, that, and I'll be happy to try to answer them for you as well. And as we go through this, if there are other, you know, modes or something or things about a certain mode that you like, throw that out there also, because I much prefer this to be a discussion than a lecture. So, uh, digital modes are narrow band, so it's sufficient on the use of radio spectrum. Um, some of them are good for that low signal strength work, weak signals. Um, it's a great way to bring people into ham radio who have a primary interest in computer technology. 
Um, it's a great way to bridge that gap between computers and radio. And uh, there's a certain amount of reliability and message reception. And by that, I don't necessarily always mean the fact that the signal gets there. But you, you can't necessarily mishear things because, you know, it's generally typed or whatever. Um, so that little bit about being a, a great way to bring people into ham radio who have a primary interest in computer technology. Um, those are pretty much your kids nowadays. You know, a lot of times people make statements like, well, they only know how to use their phones and this and that and the other. But usually I've found from having taught STEM for a couple years now, that's only because they haven't been taught how to use computers and stuff like that. And you're right, Alex, kids want to see waterfalls and stuff, um, which is why I'm, I'm trying to get that 7300 for the classroom because – we have, and in fact, it's, I brought it home for the summer because I didn't trust it sitting up there. You know, I have an old 10-tech Omni 6 and for the classroom, and it's a perfectly functional radio. I mean, it, it works, but the reality is it doesn't have a whole lot of whiz-bang features that the kids like. You know, I mean, you've got to get them interested, and once they get interested, then let them try to, you know, explore and find their own little thing. But a lot of times these, these kids are into computers – and they don't really realize that you can integrate these things. And too many hams nowadays, I think, spend so much time and energy and stuff saying, you know, well, that's not real ham radio. I mean, somebody in that that Twitter stream or whatever you call it even made a comment of, you know, ham radio needs to go back to like the old days. Give us back the CW requirement. Make everybody build their own stuff using tubes. And I was just like, what? And – you know, yeah, that's that's a good way to get kids into it. Hey, look at this seventy-year-old technology and try to make it work. Oh yeah, you get frustrated. Mm, sorry, um, I lit my grain shoot on twenty meters, so I still need to try to light up my goat fence out there. My goat's kind of stupid though; it might uh, try to lick it at the same time. Might be might be entertaining though. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm losing part of that, but oh yeah, actually I do know. So. Philip, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Well, in fact, you know, instead of the 7300 fund, we'll start calling it the waterfall fund because let's just be real. That's what they want to see. They want to see that waterfall. They And I think it will help them. They can see those little spikes and, you know, stuff like that. But All right, so shaking hands. It's it's kind of one of those things that we're not allowed to do anymore. Now we have to, like, you know, bump elbows or whatever that junk is. But you can, Don, and – uh. You know, and there are other ways to get that waterfall in there. You're right, but it, it's it, that's definitely an option I, c I can look at. So, um, so some of the advantages here, if the kid wants to join the fang gang, dude, and my, I've got my own fang gang at school. I mean, I'm at 25 kids that got licensed, and other ones like begging me right now to take his test. He said, "Man, I'm ready to take it. I'm ready to take it." And I, I told him about the uh, hamstudy.org, you know, go go do some of the online ones. But he's a middle school kid, you know, or actually he's a high school kid. And so, you know, he's ready to sit for his tech and his general. And he's like, man, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. But then he's like, ooh, 30 bucks because the club that I'm in is a Laurel-affiliated club, which means free. So, you know, the the, the kids are – that that's a distinct advantage. I, I promise you, I could not have gotten 25, 26 kids licenses this year if I had to charge them 15 bucks a pop. Which, you know, I'm not sure how we get away with 15 bucks a pop with certain BEs. I mean, that that to me seems like too much. But you know, anyway. So um, let's, let's check. I've seen a few folks pop in here. My kid is a special case. We're building automatons also. Uh, G90 screen is too small. Um, free things for the kids. Yeah, that's kind of the goal. Although technically if I buy them with school money, then they have to stay school property and get inventoried, which that's going to be fun since school got kind of canceled in March and not all of the things got turned back in. So we're going to see what happens there. So um, let's see. Anyway, so handshaking with some of the digital modes, it just kind of like sends a signal back and forth and says, you know, Make sure they're on the same path and message messages getting received before it sends any of the critical stuff. And then there are ways that you can have error correction, you know, where it kind of like 
redundantly sends information and stuff like that. Um, you know what? I think I know why this is doing that. Let me drag it that way and see if that fixes. All right. So in the beginning, um, Ridi is one of you know the earliest mode. Yada yada yada. It was sent at 50 baud, which basically translates to really 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 slow. Um, one of the big things in these images, I I snagged these off of. I forget. It's in the description. If it's not there already, it will be. But um, that's one of the things that a lot of times when people first get into digital modes, you know, you got to find what frequency for different modes. You got to, you know, how do you identify which type of signals, which stuff like that. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to try to gear some things towards for, for new people. You know, not all the in-depth complicated stuff, but how do I even get started? And then my hope's going to be that when they first get out there and, you know, make that first, you know, PSK31 contact or whatever it is, somebody doesn't berate them on the keyboard for doing something, you know, slightly taboo. So let's see, T.O., fabulous question. Our family likes. All right, so. Um, Amtor, I've never done Amtor. Um, it's one of the first modes used on HF, and it's sent in chunks. Um, I honestly only put this in there because I'm going to uh, kind of have a little presentations that I'm putting together for, for my kids about digital modes. And, well, the reality is if I can talk about chunks, I can make it memorable. Um, we won't go into details because somebody might have a weak stomach. But with kids, sometimes, you know, talking about chunks works. And so – um, but it's sent in chunks receiving, so this is kind of my reminder to myself later when I go back and I flesh this thing out for, for kids. Um, basically, I kind of like spews a chunk out at, at the receiving end. When the receiving end says, whoa, I caught that, then it sends the next chunk. So Ape had to go make water. Um, definitely outdated by today's standards. Um, <clears throat> pack tour. Now, I did some packet radio stuff when I first got into – Stuff, yeah, I am. Well, feel free to talk, brother. Come on, eight. But uh, I did some packet radio stuff when I first got into ham radio. In fact, I've still got that old Cantronics KPC3 somewhere. I'm sure my wife will tell me that if I had things more clean, then it'd be easier to find. But there it is, it still exists. Um, but I didn't do a whole bunch with it. I had the little mailbox and whatnot, and I didn't do it too much with it because back then, I, don't know, I just I kind of got on it for a little while. There wasn't a whole lot of folks on it that I found, and I just kind of didn't. And then now I guess I need to get it back on the air. But uh, let's see what we got. NASA is pushing the SSTV now from the ISS when it passes over. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. Um, and is it Hosh that has the thing on how to capture capture those each time it comes over? I think it's Jason or Josh. Maybe it's Jason. I don't remember. One of the YouTuber guys has has a video on you know how to set it up so it just passively catches those things, which is kind of cool. In fact, we're going to do that this year with with the kiddos. So you hear Pactor is coming back, huh? Where'd you hear that, Ape? Um, all right, so PSK. Now, this is the digital mode that I did a fair amount with, um, and I enjoyed it. You know, it's I kind of liked it that I could, you know, type little messages and go back and forth. It was fun. Um, I just – I don't do it so much anymore because I don't do a whole bunch of digital modes anymore. I will get on FT8 every now and then, especially you – know, that's how I finally got North Dakota – because like two people live in North Dakota, and I needed that for my work all states. That was the last one I needed, and I finally grabbed it on FT8. But um, so that mode is still very active, even even now with all the uh, JT or WSJTX stuff and all that. So let's see. My packet node was called Postbox because I was only a couple miles north of the Wiley Post here. So what's for dinner, Chuck? We'll be over in a little while. Um, 
And I, I grabbed this screenshot off of electronicnotes.com because, well, I didn't feel like retyping them. And this is similar to what I was talking about on a repeater or whatnot. You know, if you don't take the time to, to make sure that a new person has easy enough access to see what some of this stuff means, you know, they're going to get lost. You know, K, the, let's just take this one for a minute. K is an invitation for the other station to transmit, similar to over when using voice communications. Okay, but nowadays, oops, didn't mean to do that. Nowadays, K to a kid means okay. You know, like yeah, I'll, I tell my kid something. It's like, hey, you know, go do the dishes, K. Okay? okay, that's an entirely different meaning for them, and so that's. Slide head slightly. Oh, sorry. Cha cha to the left. Cha cha to the right. Bring it back now, y'all. Oh, there we go. There now I'm surrounded by text. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so you know you have to keep those things in mind. This is a somewhat dated digital mode, and but they still mm, K. Yeah, um, K N. I don't think that has any meaning nowadays to kids. Um, I see BTU and I, th I think barbecue grill or gas grills and stuff like that, but I think I don't think most of the rest of these are. <clears throat> I'd hate to think what that one might mean nowadays. Fine business. So, oops. All right. So anyway, take you know have these things available and make sure you know that. All right. So WSJT. Um, there's several flavors of it, kind of like coffee and other beverages, um, but the most popular is FT8. Now, this is the one that everybody's going to go, you know, that ain't real ham radio, and want to complain about, okay, because, you know, that's not a real QSO and this and that and the other. Hang on, I need some lifeblood. Okay, but I don't see why that... FT8 is not considered real ham radio, other than the fact that it's very automated. Okay, I can see why, well, you know, it's it's so automated and this and that and the other, but at the same time, is it not very automated when we have a Raspberry Pi set up to hook to a radio to constantly catch the SST, yeah, SSTV images coming off of the ISS? That's still automated so I don't see where they figure one is okay one is not yeah smoking apes says FTH fake but you know smoking apes kind of fake too so that's okay um, it has some def definite benefits in that it's great for weak signal operation um, stuff that you can't even hear <clears throat> it can still pull out and and <laughs> yeah Philip Morse code is the original digital mode um, but that's what you know, everybody's going to, well, you know, everybody should still know the code, this and that, the other. So, you know, if that's a whole nother soapbox. Um, like I said, it's great to grab those DX entities or states you're missing. Like I said, that's how I got North Dakota. I've been hunting North Dakota forever. I've been hunting North Dakota long enough. My wife is probably tired of hearing me say, I really need North Dakota. And then I got them on FT8. So, unfortunately, they confirmed it and everything. So, but... And you know, I don't find it terribly exciting to, to use. And I mean, he says, FT8 is cool for what it is. I just find it boring to operate. It was fun to try and figure out, lesson learned, moving on. And that's kind of my thing. It's I'll fire it up every now and then and just see, you know, what weird places I can get. I mean, I got, I don't remember what part of Africa. It's dude on a little peninsula sticking off the west coast of Africa there. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But... You know, I don't I don't spend a lot of time on there, but FT8, Flat Earth Truth, number eight. So, the Earth is flat, though, so I'm with you, brother. But you're right. I mean, just because that may not be your cup of tea, or in my case, cup of joe, you know, don't sit there and trash people for doing it. I mean, if that's what they like about the hobby, let them run with it. So, um, it's growing rapidly. It's still growing. Um. You know, a lot of folks are, are getting into it, 
And yeah, sometimes I'll just fire it up if I'm bored. Like you said, Chuck, it's like, eh, I'll just turn it on and see who's there. And I'll just click on a few and see if I can get them. Just, I don't know, because. <clears throat> um, it can be fast paced and fun, um, you know, when it gets really busy. Um, if, you know, I use it, you know, or my daughter and I sometimes, like, you know, well, more when she was younger, we would get on digital modes or even when we were doing voice and I would, I would work a station and she would find it, find it on my map and put it there. So what about FT4? Well, that, that's kind of what I was saying. What about it, Alex? What do you, you know, it's that they all, they're all different flavors in there. So, you know, I just said FT8 because FT8 seems to be, well, just to be honest, what's extremely popular and also at the same time, it seems to be the one that if you if you really want to make a room full of people, I won't say mad, but mad, you know, at a at a ham radio club meeting or something like that, walk in there and talk about how great FT8 is FT8 is as a mode, and you're going to get a couple, you know, the room will divide like the Red Sea. So you should see where you reach with 500 watts at three elements. I love FT8 when I don't want to talk to people but still make contacts. And you're right. Okay, and that's a good point. In fact, that's kind of one of the things I was going to talk about in a minute. So, beautiful segue. Um, you know, if you're <laughs> – for drunken streaming. Okay, FT8 and all of these digital modes are really good for those introverted people. Okay, so these computer-savvy kids that – they're on a computer because that's the way they like to interact with life, you know, and it's not necessarily anybody's place to say that's not how you should interact with life. You should get outside and go have face-to-face -face contact, and then you can catch the human malware virus. But, you know, if that's their thing, then why not let them build on that? And so these digital modes are great for that. I mean, they're, <clears throat> you know, they can they can still work the world. They can get all over the place they can make ham radio contacts. They can they can play with new antennas and design antennas and transmit on them and still never have to pick up a microphone. You know, they can do it all through their computer. And that's what some of these folks, and I, I keep saying kids because that's what I teach, but new hams in general are the younger folks, the younger generation, you know, we are the children of the future. Um, if you don't cater some of it and let them kind of run with it, and that was another comment that somebody said, yeah, you're, you're extremely introverted, eh? we can tell. Um, but one of the people in there made a comment that, you know, most of the grown folks are horrible at reaching out to kids to get them into radio. Because, you know, they, they want to teach them the stuff that the grown-up thinks is cool. And rather than do that, I'd rather just kind of, you know, throw the buffet out and say, these are all some of the different things. What do you think you want to look at? Well, look at it. And, you know, if, if you get your feathers ruffled easily, if, you know, 15 minutes into talking about it, they're like, eh, not my thing. Okay. You got to have thick skin. I mean, I, I can assure you that what an introverted YouTuber. Yeah. That's how come, you know, the artist formerly known as the smoking ape doesn't tell anybody who the smoking ape really is. But, um, You've got to have the ability to let a kid, if they just say, eh, not my thing, you know, you got to let it go. So let that go and let them find something else. So, all right, let me try to catch up on some of these comments here real quick. Um, I've yet to, but let me, real quick, I've yet to use Jess 8 call. I've watched, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? He's done, he's been on a couple of the YouTuber streams. I've watched him. His name just, like, leaped out of my my brain, but I just haven't used it yet, so it's it looks kind of cool, but <clears throat> all right, let's see. Crazy faced thumbs. I'm not sure what that meant to you. Let's see what we got. How many times does your signal need to go around the earth to pick yourself up long path? <laughs> Zero times the signal don't go around the Earth; they go over the disk. Because remember, the Earth is flat, Adam. 
We, we already had this lesson. Flat Earth, Flat Earth. Ooh, coffee. Good idea, Alex. I don't get the canoe reference thing, though. And it must have been a reflection off the UFO. Okay, so um, different digital modes that, you know, obviously somebody threw out FT4. Um, what are some of the other ones that y'all are using here that y'all still use? Like I said, I don't use a whole bunch of digital. I do it every now and then just when, and this year in school, we're going to try to do a whole bunch more of it, assuming we get to have school like regular. You know, right now we've got like alternating days kind of thing happening. We'll see how this works out for us. But um, Whisper is another one. Hey, look at that. Six participation medals, eight. You know, and Whisper is one that I actually meant to throw in here. <laughs> SSB. Yeah, that's one of the great digital modes. But, um, you know, Whisper is the propagation deal where it's like weak signal propagation. I forget what the R stands for. But that's kind of cool just to leave monitoring, just see where you could work. Um, but, you know, that's a two-meter SSB. So, you know, and there are a lot of kids that are open to doing voice. And that's kind of the, you know, I can't just run with it either way. I just, I you know, when you have that many kids, I kind of just let it go whichever way they want. It's why I have no hair because I pull it out. It's just silly. If that were true, the cat would have pawed all the stuff off the edge of the earth by now. <laughs> have you tried free DB? I have not, Don. I mean, I'm not even familiar with it. You might have to educate me a little bit on that one. So, free DB voice. Let me write that down because otherwise I'm old and I'll forget it. So if yeah, if you got a second, type in there. Give me, give us the the quick and ugly on what free DV is. Um, I've actually done two meter sideband before. When you know the ACU up there worked, it's been a while. It's now it's just a decoration of reminders of things not to buy. Ham radio adventures. No, I don't have the equipment yet. So. <clears throat> We had a cat that looked just like, I agree, cats, 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 cats. Thank you, Jordan. That's his, appreciate that, Don. His, uh, I've watched him in, gosh, I don't know how many videos and presentations he's done, and his name just like, whew, chunked right out of there. So. All right, so people who are, let me get over here. Cancel that out. Me. If let's see if any of y'all have accepted the challenge and hopped over here to comment on the tweet. If you haven't, I'm serious, guys. This is this is a chance for you to actually tell people. I mean, I, I don't I, I don't really know how much clout Rhea has, so you know. You, I know Bob likes her, but let's see, I was referring to culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's scroll down the bottom, see if we can find something. An hour ago, 20 hours ago. I don't get how it's arranged this way. I don't see any of y'all in here. Youth of today can't decide on hair color. This is true. Whoever Marcus Brody Six is, I don't have to decide on my hair color. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a whole bunch of that in there. But y'all get get on there. Let let them know what you think is wrong. And we'll go ahead and take another minute. Your headset hooked to radio with sound card interface. Really a digital sound. True. Um, let's see, little peanut. Are y'all seriously talking about your cats? My, I was at a buddy's house today. Since you're talking about cats, and he he's got like 
tons of barn cats, and I was like, mm, no, this, this this doesn't work. So let me see if I can get that in the camera there. Yep, I left the cat there. So you don't Twitter yet. So, well, you know, you can email her too. <laughs> Ria at n2rj.com. So you don't have to tweet it, you know. In fact, that's what she says. If, if you don't want your opinion to be out there in the open, me personally, I don't care. You know, I'll throw it out there. That's If you don't like turd nuggets, you don't like turd nuggets. But, you know, the important thing is let them know what you think can be improved there. So, as you can show how to use GSA Caldwell Portable. Yeah, I've watched that. several of Julian's videos. I've not watched that one, though. Cats are evil. They'll be the demise of the earth. <laughs> so, careful. Mike's going to come after you, Greg. But All right, so any other digital modes or stuff that y'all move or use or anything about, you know, the what's wrong with ham radio tweet that y'all want to talk about, throw it in there. That's got a few minutes left that we can talk about. Let's see who liked me. Hey, look, I know that guy. Watch this. I'm going to follow Philip back. Oh, see? Look at that, Philip. You just made it onto the onto the screen. I got you, Philip. Let's see. Jason has some videos on Jay. Yeah, and, you know, Jason was on here last week. You want to talk about a dude who knows some stuff. He know, He knows some stuff about some stuff. In fact, I've got... I don't think my wife's in there. Listen, I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 coming tomorrow. So, because, you know, I've got several threes, but you know how it is. There's a new one out, so I had to get one to play with. So, yeah, that's what he looks like. Y'all want to see? That is him. Philip Muth, developing a, a new normal. So... All right, now Philip, you got to go in there and you got to tweet. You got to got to tell her what you think. Remember, keep it friendly. Yeah, it has generated. Anytime Mike's in the house, it's going to degenerate to a cat talk, though. Especially depending on what Mike's drinking. Some sometimes it goes that way. So it's okay. It's quite often it turns into coffee or other beverage chat, depending on. Speaking of which, it's time for the emergency thermos. He looks cooler than you thought. Look at that. Compliments. He started cybernetics. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. I have to look look up what you, who you're referring to there. That's an idea. Will Cat's antenna. All right, so somebody's got to go ahead and, you know, tag Hosh on that one, see if he can get a cat to antenna. That's a good question. Who's getting the 705? Obviously, everybody's seen Eric's videos pounding around everywhere with the 705. He got the Japanese version. So it's a cool-looking little radio. I mean, I definitely wouldn't mind having one. But are you getting one, Alex? Well, since I don't have a KX anything or a 705, that's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. Not for you either, Chuck. And any particular reason why, I'm curious as to, you know, I had a lot of people say not having an antenna tuner and this and that and the other. But, and I don't know a whole bunch about the KX twos and threes and whatnot I'm, I'm taking it they come with a with a tuner I don't I've never really looked at them that closely <laughs> well okay yeah y'all y'all that are saying that those are way too big and heavy y'all are the ones that are you know packing your your radios in Altoid tins and stuff like that I mean I'm I'm the dude that actually lugged my RV battery to a pod activation so Yeah, see, I like the, the look of the 705. Now, 
you know. So, A, if you're going to get the handy-dandy backpack, you know. Got the optional accessory of a backpack, which apparently has, you know, you have antenna and stuff coming out of it. And talk on it, but from what I understand from Ray, it, it, it wouldn't exactly fit on he or I or whatnot. So, the KX line come with the tuner if you pay another 300 for it. So, it comes with it for 300 bucks. So, yeah, I'd rather just make my dipole the right length. So, nah, the 705 is not too small. Maybe the 705 backpack is too small for me, T.O. I have the KX2, I'll pass around the 705. Well, and I can see that. I mean, if you've already got, if you've already got a, a comparable radio or something, then yeah. But, you know, if you don't, that's kind of where, I don't know, I kind of like the look of it, but. All right, so I think we've about covered it all. Um, like I said, if you have any other um, – all right, Philip, you tweeted. Hang on. I was just about to close this out, but we got to see what, what Philip tweeted here. Here we go. Not enough new blood being encouraged and mentored. Elmers need to be more open to the noobs. I agree, brother. See, what's that? I gave you a heart. But – um. That's my thing. It's even if there is new blood, you know, they're not they're not welcome for sure. Everybody's heard the horror stories about, you know, the new guy goes to the club meeting and nobody talks to him. So, yep, he's not he's he or she's not going back. So, all right. So, like I said, if y'all have any ideas about or any other digital modes that you like, throw it down in the, in the comments below. Um, you know, we can keep the discussion going there. But the, the point is digital modes are a great way to kind of bridge that gap to the from the computer science folks to the radio folks. And in my opinion, it's it's a perfect way to try to get some of these youth in here. Because, you know, a lot of them do get that mic fright and a lot of them are, are tied to that computer screen. And it's, it, it's a way to kind of get them experimenting and building and, you know, playing ham radio and getting them a little off of some of the phones. And, I mean, you can ham radio on your phone. We won't even get started with the argument about Echo Link. But, um, so digital modes, like I said, you know, give it a shot. If, if it's not for you, then try a different digital mode. Try something else. But, you know, it's, that, that's an option that's out there. And to me, it's a great recruiting tool for some of these younger folks. Buy all the radios. I agree. Buy all the radios. I don't have, I don't have the bank account to do that though, Don. So, but that's about it. Don't forget the uh, anti-net at Ham Radio TV. He, he's on in, what, just over an hour? So, yeah, that ARK antenna for the win. I still don't have one of those. Hint, hint, hint. So, but don't forget the anti-net. He's streaming in just over an hour. So hopefully we'll see, see some of y'all over there. And I hope to see you on the air. Y'all take care. 7-3.